Hi, I'm Tom, a developer here at Cloud Cannon, and today I want to show you how to make a site on Cloud Cannon. Um, we're going to build an Astro site today, and we'll go find a theme on their astro.build page. Big Spring Light Astro, I've looked at before, it looks good. Uh, so we can just go get started. This is their repo, so let's make our own copy. So just pull that down locally and git clone that in there. I will just update my SSH key because I have a work and a personal, but if you just have one, just git clone it. Um, and I'll CD into Big Spring. From here, let's remove their git folder and create our own. So git in that, and we can go create a repo as well. So we should have a repo of our own. If we want to push up to that, we can go git add, pull, git commit, git push. And this is warp terminal that's providing all these nice commands for me. Um, and I just need to change that SSH key again. Cool, and it's filled it up for me. So if I git push now, it should work. Also, we have our own repo of the Big Spring, and it's not attached to the theme for sure one. Let's create a site on Cloud Cannon. So, you will see this page when you first come to your organization on Cloud Cannon. If you don't have a Cloud Cannon organization, sign up for a Cloud Cannon account. There's a 14 day free trial if you want to give it a go. Um, so, you can create a site and find our GitHub repository. So we can find our Big Spring Light Astro repository and the main branch on that. Um, I'm going to rename that something nicer. We use unified config. If you don't see that, don't worry. It's just a flag for a recent release we did. Cool. So Clacken is trying to detect some things about our site automatically. Getting some things right, but some things not. So we'll change to, to Astro and we actually don't want a source for this one. And we'll regenerate. Collections on the side are looking nice. And yeah, I'm keen to save that. From here, we can just fill in the default build suggestions it gives us, npm install, npm run build, and dist for the output path. And yeah, we can cache no modules for each build, save us some time. So you can watch that build through this output down here, or you can navigate to your status page and watch your build if you like. Sweet, our build is done, um, and Clarkin gives us this live site preview that we can go to, which is a random adjective noun, cloudbin.net. Um, so this is accessible by anyone on the internet now. Uh, these are no indexed by default, so you don't have to worry about a search engine finding them if you don't want them to. Uh, and you can attach a custom domain from here and you have a astro theme on the internet. So let's check out a blog post and we'll try and make some changes to this in the app. So if I go to my blog collection over here and I see, yep, this is blog post three, I'll go to this. You can see that Clarkin gives us this WYSIWYG editor and provides this nice interface over this markdown file. So this is all front matter for our markdown, which will be attached in our code to do something. And this is all body content, which is output onto the page as body content. So we can come and make a change here and rebuild and it should work out of the box. So this is a change in the demo and we can also like provide some formatting to that uh, and let's also add an image we'll just explore existing images we haven't set a proper path here so it's not going to the right place but we can still get to our images and we'll do that in a bit let's put this nice one in and a placeholder image Cool, so I can save that. 
So let's finish building. If we go to the page on the live site, we can see this is a change in the demo and the new image that we've put in. So pretty quick to get going on editing existing markdown. We also provide interfaces out of the box for editing data files, which I know that this footer is controlled through a data file, so we can go demonstrate that in the app. If we go to the config data file and go to config, there's this params object in here, which has footer content. We can change this to a new footer content. And we can save that. You can see it's saving a config.json file this time rather than a markdown. If we save that and wait for that to rebuild, we can show the footer content changing. So that build's done. We go refresh the page. We should see some new footer content. So pretty quick to get going editing blog posts. We can see this toolbar at the top has some options, uh, which is cool. We did a bold text before. We've got italics, lists, block quote, image, link, snippets some formatting. We actually can control this all and configure it to however you want your editors to set. So let's just click this finish setup to get rid of the wand there and let's go edit our config file. You can also get to this menu through site settings, editing, edit your config file. So we want to go to our blog collection and add some editing interfaces. So if we go to our editables in our blog collection, we can add config for our content editor here, uh, content, and whatever we tick here will show up in our toolbar in the WYSIWYG editor. So I want all of those. I won't worry about some of these. I will Figure the formatting so that we can only have one H1 on the page. Horizontal rule. Yes, we want that. Lists, out then, redo, remove format. So I pretty much ticked all of them except for some of the image ones. And if we navigate back to the page now, we should see a lot more in our toolbar. And we do. So let's make this earlier change a quote. We can add a list, unordered list, a list, another list item. Cool, we already have one image, but I will show how we upload an image as well. So we can upload a new image and we can use my portrait. And that will just upload. Cool. Let's add a table in. Get this nice interface here for that. And let's fill this in. Cool. Filled our table in some placeholder content. And we can also show off a code block here. Just some code I have. And we can also change this to JavaScript it out on the syntax highlighting. Cool, so if we save that now, go to our save screen, we can see we're saving the post itself, the config file that we changed, and the portrait I uploaded. Once that's done, we can again go to the live site, and we have a block quote, a list, a portrait, a table, and some code highlighting. So pretty easy to get going, editing blog posts. Uh, what would be good though is if we can create new blog posts. So we actually can already click in and again, we'll try and detect some defaults for us, but we haven't really told it what will be the next collection item in this collection. It will take the last one in the collection and use that as a template. But we can control this more explicitly if we create a schema. So to do that, I'm going to pull uh, this down locally. 
So I will go get poll. Here you can start to see the advantages of using a get based CMS. If we go to the repo that is behind all of this, we can see that everything that we've done is saved in Git history. Which means that we can also pull down any changes that Clark Hanna makes locally and troubleshoot or do dev work as we need. Yeah, I've pulled that down. If I go to the code for that, so code. Cool, and I'll npm install. So in our code, you can see that we did make a change to this blog and Clyde Cannon has provided this nice interface to add stuff to our body content, but really it is just marked down under the hood, which our site then turns into HTML, which is then styled by our site style sheet. Cool, so our npm install is finished and let's just start it locally. Oh, sorry, npm run dev on this one. So we can see our site locally here and we can go check out our blog post and see our changes we did. So we brought this down locally so that we can create a schema. Um, I'm gonna do that by creating a Cloud Cannon folder and make schemas in here. You can create the schemes folder kind of anywhere you like, but I like keeping it under a Cloud Cannon folder and we'll create a post.md. And to find the contents of what I want a new post to be, we'll just go to one of these old ones and modify that. So pretty much everything can start blank and we can fill it in as we want on a new post. But I will leave draft as false by default. I'll push that change up. So if we go to Cloud Cannon, we can see that that change pushed to our GitHub repo, which triggered a build on Cloud Cannon because we detected a change to that repo. Now that that's finished, we can go back to our configuration file. And yep, we're in the right collection. We still want to be in blog. We want creating and adding new pages. Add schema, we'll make it the default schema, which means if you don't define a schema on a page, it will just use the default for the collection. If you're not naming it default, it can be named sort of any arbitrary name you want. And the path to that is the Cloud Cannon folder, schemas, post.md. I actually don't want to remove extra inputs just in case there are some extra font matter fields that aren't included in our schema, but we'll let them stay. Cool, we'll call it post and we'll change this to newspaper. And we can save that. Go to blog. So that's finished building and we can just go add a post here. You can see that the icon we added was working and these are all blank. So that's great. Let's create a little post. Some Bob Ross in here, a new demo post. Use a flower for it and we'll make that today's date. So if we save that, we can see the titles used for our file name. We can configure that if we don't like that behavior, but that's good for me. I'm just gonna stop our local host for now. Cool, so that's done and we can go back to our blog page on our live site and see this new demo post that we've done. From here, a couple of little finishing touches. I want to delete this elements page, show you how to delete an item. And then since that's referenced in our header, we should probably remove that. Where is it? Elements, delete that from the header, save that. Make sure to tick that. Cool. And if we go to our live site and refresh, we can see elements is gone. And even if we tried to go there, there's no page. Cool. So 
to finish up, I want to show how to configure a couple of inputs on one of these landing page type ones. I saw earlier that these have this answer input, which Clark Cannon is detecting as text, but it's not detecting that it probably wants to be marked down um, because of this markdown formatting and the length of the text. So we can go change that in our config file. Config, and we will just do that at the global level. So all inputs called answer will have this config. And we can do that in global editing and faces inputs. I want a markdown input for the key answer. And I'll just leave the default options, but you can control these, what fields are available similar to the editables that we saw earlier. Um, and I don't actually even need to save to get this. We can just go back and you can see that answer is now a much nicer formatted text box and it even is recognizing the link. Um, one more similar to this I saw is contact page has an array of contacts. Um, we want each string in this array to be a markdown input. So similarly, we can go to site settings, anyway, you can get to the config file and we'll do another global input here. Uh, you can scope these inputs to collections if you like, but I'm just gonna do globally for now and we'll go another markdown. And the syntax for an array is, or an array item, I should say, is everything in the context array. You can do that. Same deal, I'm just gonna leave the defaults. You go contact. You can see these are markdown inputs now. There are other ways to control what's added to an array or an object in Cloud Cannon, um, which is a concept called structures. And we'll go into that in a future video, but for adding just a simple string to an array, that syntax should do. Cool, we can save our changes, which are just config changes, and we can call that done. Um, in future videos, I'd like to have a refactor, turn all these individual collections into one big pages collection, which just makes a bit more sense to me. We'll leave the blog as its own collection, although we'll move the index page into a pages collection. Once we've had a refactor like that with our pages, we can also look at making these live editable. So any changes you make in the sidebar will show a visual preview on the right and it should update in live time once we set that up. Uh, and that will be using a component building workflow called Bookshop. We can look at adding more schemas in the next one so that we can create these type of landing pages ourselves all in app and we can also look at adding more complex HTML to our posts. So if we want to add a button in the middle of our body content, how do we do that? We have a thing called snippets in Cloud Cannon, which we haven't set up yet, but as a way to put HTML throughout your markdown body content. So if you enjoyed this video or if any of those future things sound good to you, please leave a comment. Um, or get in touch with our support team and we'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.